We're looking at lead code number 17, letter combinations of a phone number. This is a very frequently asked question. Um, we can see here that Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, I mean, everyone's asking this question just even in the last, in the last six months. Um, even in the last year, even the last two years, this question is, is frequently asked. And it's actually very easy to solve if we apply a specific backtracking template to this problem, okay? And so I have many other questions that use this backtracking template, um, in particular permutations one and two, subsets one and two, combination sum. They may, not as be, they may not be as frequently asked, but you can see that this is just a variation of any one of those problems. And once you have a really clear understanding of how this template works, you can really apply it to any question that's dealing with combinations, subsets, or permutations. Okay, so we'll go step by step uh, how to solve this and how to apply this template, uh, this backtracking template. And then if you're still confused, I highly recommend checking out my other videos um, in this list that really go over this step by step. And it will make sense. It's a little confusing at first, but once it clicks, it really is not that bad, and you can solve a lot of questions uh, really quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at the prompt here. Letter combinations of a phone number. Here we're given a string from two to nine inclusive. We want to return all possible letter combinations that, could, uh, that the number could represent. And we can return the answer in any order. So we can see here the mapping is that two maps to ABC, three maps to DEF, and so on and so forth. So here we have two and three, so we can look at this as A, B, C, and D, E, F, and then what are all the letter combinations of that? If we get an empty string, we just want to return an empty array, so that's a, a good edge case to be aware of. And then if we just have two, we're just going to have uh, the first three letters. The digit's length will be less than or equal to four, so it's not going to be a very large uh, input. And the range is between two and nine. Okay, so this is a combinations problem and the way we want to look at this is is we're going to use recursion we're going to use a backtracking template and we want to look at this as a tree okay so what do i mean by that so here we're just we're not we're going to have to create a hash that maps to all these numbers but for here because we're just looking at two and three i'm just going to create a little hash map right here for two mapping to abc and three mapping to def so when we get to our first level of the tree, we're at two, right over here. What are our options? What can we put into our slate? We're gonna have a slate right over here, okay? And, and we're gonna use, a, use an empty array to keep track of everything as we, as we uh, recurse down the tree. And in our slate, what are our options when, we're, and when I is at this two? Well, two maps over here to A, B, C, right? So we have three options. We can either have A, we can have B or we can have C in the slate. Okay, and now once we have hit all three of those, we can go ahead and increment I, call depth first search recursion on each one of these uh, nodes on the, the next level of the tree, so on A, B, and C. And what are our options once we get to the second level on A? So here we can see that we have D, E, F. So we can push um, we already have A on the slate. We can push D on the slate. We can push um, E on the slate. And we can push F on the slate. Same thing here. We can push D on the slate. We can push E on the slate. Or we can push F on the slate. And the same thing here. We can push D on the slate. We can push E on the slate, or we can push F on the slate. Okay, and now I is going to increment. We're going to pass it down our recursive uh, helper function, and we can see we're out of range, so we hit that leaf level. Okay, and once we hit that leaf level, we just want to have a global result. And we want to make a copy of this. We can just join this because it's going to be an array, but our, our result, we want it in a string. So we can just add that into our, into our result. Okay. 
and so on and so forth. Now, how is this working? What's happening here is that we're going to have a slate, which is just an empty array. We're going to pass this recursively down the call stack. Okay, so this slate array is going to come over here, it's going to come over here, and then it's going to hit this base case where i is going to be the equal to the length of our input, right? That's when we hit this base case. When we get to that base case, we're going to do a linear operation, join whatever's in the slate, and then push that into the result. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and pop off this D off our slate, come back up, and then push this E on there. Now we are at the, the um, base case here, we're at the leaf, and then we're going to make a copy of this and push this into, the, into our global result. We're going to pop this E off, come back up, and so on and so forth, and we're going to do in or pre-order all the way down this tree. Okay, so that's the idea. This is difficult to grasp if you're not familiar with recursion or if it's your first time um, uh, being exposed to this concept. It is a bit difficult. So if this is your first time and this is not making sense, I highly recommend get a pen and paper, draw the tree out, okay? Once we go through the code, put the code side by side to a pen and paper and just draw everything out and it will click, I promise, it will click and once it clicks, it makes these types of questions really easy. Like they're not that bad, not that difficult to do. So let's just go over time and space complexity on this. What is our, our time complexity? Well, worst case, we could have, we could have, uh, let's see here, we could have nine or seven. So worst case, we could have four letters here, right? So we could have four uh, to the n, okay, and that's going to be how many levels of the tree that we're going to have based on the digits that, that the digits are mapping to. And then at the bottom, we have to do a linear scan, okay, so we're going to do 4n times n is going to be our time complexity here. Okay. And it is a little bit difficult to calculate time complexity with this because you have to really look at it as a tree. So if this doesn't make sense, I would take the numbers seven and seven that both have four, uh, four letters on it and just draw out the tree. And you can see that when you draw it all out, the time complexity is four n times n. And you just have to remember when you get to the leaf, you have to do that n operation, which is, which is where that n comes from. Now, what about space? Okay, uh, it's pretty much the same deal here. Okay, worst case, we're gonna have four N, okay? And then we're gonna, that's just gonna be our result. And then it's going to be another N because that's gonna correspond to the length or the, the height of the tree, okay? The call stack that we're gonna need to get all the way down. So our space complexity here is uh, also four N to the N if we're including the result output and into, into our space. So not the best time or space complexity, and that's why you can see in the input, the length of this is no, no bigger than four because you can see how this just grows like crazy huge. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the code and we're just gonna use this template and if, uh, if this is new to you, I highly recommend checking out the other videos in this list, uh, this recursion group of questions that I have um, videos for. So I highly recommend checking out those other ones until this template kind of becomes second nature because you can apply this and you know solve a lot of these types of questions quickly. So we're gonna start with our global result. Okay, and in here we're just gonna uh, set that to an array. Now we're going to have our depth first search recursive helper. Search, okay, and this is going to equal i uh, digits and then a slate. Okay, and now we want to have our base case. So if i equals digits.length, 
then we want to take whatever's in the slate, join it, and then push it into result. Okay, and then we want to return out of there. And now we want to um, figure out our depth first search uh, recursive. Our recursive case, okay? So what do we want to do? We want to get the chars, right? So we can say let chars equals, we'll create an alpha hash map here that will map all these uh, uh, numbers to the letters. So we'll say alpha of digits at index i. Okay, so that's going to give us ABC for the first one. The second one, when we increment i, it's going to give DEF. And now we just want to do a for loop. So we can say for let uh, char of chars. Okay, so we're going to be at A, then we're going to go to B, then we're going to go to C. And then we just want to add A to the slate. call a recursive helper by incrementing i. And then we want to pop this off the slate. OK? And that's all we got to do for the, for the uh, depth first search recursive helper. Then we just want to call depth first search recursive helper. i will set to 0. We'll have our digits there, and then our slate will be an empty array. And then we can just return our global result. Okay, and one last thing we want to do here is uh, alpha hash map. And so here, this is kind of monotonous, but we're just going to do uh, 2 is going to map to ABC. Okay. 3 is going to map to DEF. 4 is going to map to GHI. 5 is going to map to JKL. 6 maps to MNO. 7 is going to map to um, PQRS, 8 is going to map to TUV, and 9 is going to map to WXYZ. Ooh. <laughs> I feel that was the most exhausting part. Okay, so we have our alpha map here. Let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see all the code in one go. And that's what it looks like. You can see the, the main code is not that complicated. And this is just using a template that we used in all these other problem sets that we have in this group. And let's go ahead and run that, make sure everything works. And we're good. Oh, we have one last thing here. We just want to say if digits.length equals zero, Okay, so then we just want to return an empty array. Okay, and you can see we're making relatively pretty good time and space complexity on this. So that is leak code number 17. If you're still confused about this, that's okay. This is a difficult question or these types of questions are a little bit tricky if you're not really familiar with recursion or if you're not familiar with this template. So. If you're still confused, I highly recommend, number one, get a pen and paper and draw out the tree. Really make that connection between recursion and a tree. And then check out the other videos because it's, it's basically rinsing and repeating. We're using the same template and solving multiple problems um, using this recursion tree method, this backtracking recursion method. Okay, so that's Lead Code 17. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.